food is probably the area in which um, we can best understand how we relate both to nature, the earth, natural resources, and how we relate to, to others. Uh, food is also about conviviality, about sharing, about social norms. And so um, it's a fantastic eye-opener to understand our interdependence both with nature and with others. Uh, food is also um, increasingly um, a culture that is under threat from globalization, uh, the development of long supply chains and the um, progress of processing uh, processed foods in the diets. And so it is also very symbolic of uh, this transition that we are now uh, facing uh, and that we must uh, control and, and, and regulate. And that is probably why I'm, I'm so interested in this topic. Okay. I deeply believe that the food systems as they have developed until now are not sustainable. They have impacts on the environment, they have impacts on the health of uh, consumers, they have important impacts on the ability for small farms to make a decent living from their work and they have impacts on developing countries who are not encouraged to develop their own food systems as a result of uh, the exports, uh, uh, cheap exports that are dumped on the local markets of these countries. So we need to change and to change we really need to create much more transparency, accountability, democracy in how decisions are made. So for me, the starting point is um, to create that uh, democracy and to involve ordinary um, women and men, ordinary citizens in shaping food policies. This may sound overambitious, but actually we have all over the world new governance structures that emerge, food policy councils. Um, we have cities more and more interested in contributing to food policies being shaped and this democratization of food systems is underway and we need to encourage it and, and build further. So for me the starting point is, is creating this democracy um, in food systems. For many years uh, the conventional wisdom was that we could help poor food deficit countries by a combination of food exports heavily subsidized by the taxpayers of OECD countries and food aid. And these countries were not in, expected to produce for themselves. Um, if they invest, invested at all in agriculture, it was primarily for export commodities, for cotton, for coffee, for tobacco, for cocoa. Um, and we never had realized that this was a source of vulnerability um, and dependence. The global food price crisis of 2008, that repeated itself in 2010, led us to realize that the urgent um, uh, uh, task was to encourage countries to feed themselves, uh, rebuild their local food systems, regain some level of self-sufficiency in production. This is not to say that they should become autarcic or that they can stop importing food. No, it is, however, to say that they should um, reinvest in producing uh, the food that they need, procuring their populations with more diverse and locally sourced uh, um, uh, foods, um, and reinvest in local farmers so that rural poverty can, can be reduced. And so we have to develop a different kind of partnership with these countries to support them in achieving this ability to feed themselves. Since uh, I work on, on food, uh, and I've been doing so over the past 10 years, it's been my objective to connect policymakers to two constituencies. Um, one is scientists, experts, who prepare fantastic scientific uh, studies, uh, 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 try to alert policymakers uh, as to the unsustainability of food systems and the dangers we are facing if we don't change things. But very often these scientists um, are not translating their concerns into concrete policy recommendations. And so one of the things I've been doing is trying to make this translation uh, possible and available. Secondly, I'm trying to link 
the underprivileged, the poor, small farmers, um, social movements with um, debates as to uh, the shape food systems should take and to connect them to policymakers to make sure that their voices are heard when most often they are not only economically marginalized but also uh, politically disempowered. And so my role as an independent researcher is to be at the center of this triangle. Um, I was privileged as a special rapporteur uh, on the right to food for the UN to um, have very close connections to governments of all world regions, but also to have the trust of scientists and of social movements. And it, it was connecting these constituencies to one another that I felt was a priority. And my work um, uh, as an independent researcher has always been at the intersection of policy making and of um, scientific uh, study. One reason why we must move beyond the common agricultural policy we have in the EU since uh, the 1960s to a common food policy that integrates agriculture, environment, health, education, rural development, is because uh, the decisions that are to be made on food issues need to be much more accountable to those who, for the moment, are victims of the system. And I think in particular of um, organizations of small farmers. In all EU countries, we see uh, increased agrarian concentration, uh, a gradual disappearance of small farms, um, that are not competitive enough, that cannot achieve the same economies of scale as larger production units, and that are not rewarded for the important services that they deliver, because they create employment, or they could, because they maintain the ecosystems, because they um, contribute to healthier, more nutritious diets. And so to me, one priority in shaping this common food policy for the EU, which I very much hope shall be on the political agenda in the next few years, is to create space for these groups to be better represented. And also for the um, poor um, um, uh, in the EU to be better represented, for the anti-hunger groups to be represented. Very often we have thought that poor families in the EU could be supported simply by a low-cost food economy in which food would be um, cheap um, for them to be able to buy even though their incomes are very low. Well, I don't agree with the idea that a cheap food economy is a substitute for robust social policies that increase the purchasing power of the poorest segments of the population. I believe all families, including low-income families, should have a right to an affordable, healthy diet. And that is a demand that um, they are making and that should be heard by the political system. Corporate social responsibility. In other terms, the voluntary initiatives that companies may take in order to contribute to healthier, more sustainable food systems are certainly part of the solution. However, corporate social responsibility will not develop on a large scale and will not be effective in making a difference unless supported by an adequate regulatory framework providing the right incentives. So, for example, Directive 95-2014 that um, obliges companies of a certain size in the EU to provide non-financial information about the sustainability of their practices is very important because it will allow so socially responsible investors to be informed as to in which companies they may invest. It will allow shareholders to use their voting rights as shareholders in general assemblies to demand from companies that they um, adopt a responsible conduct, thus limiting the reputational risk they would otherwise take, and it allows NGOs, activists, to demand from companies that they adopt um, responsible types of behavior. So it's very important to support corporate social responsibility by the kind of 
um, regulatory framework that will support the best in class and will discourage um, the free riders that um, uh, are simply practicing some sort of greenwashing in adopting certain CSR practices.